advertising, aka Thailand, you moved there. Can you talk about why you went to uh, why you went to that camp in preparation for this fight? Well, I went to um to help uh, Sora out with his fight against Bigfoot in Brazil, and uh, I really liked the place and uh, it was a great, great place. And you know, everyone was really guy kind, good to us, and uh, it's affordable. First fight in Melbourne, Mark. How excited are you? It's not my first fight in Melbourne. I started my career here. UFC fight in Melbourne. My apologies. <laughs> first fight. Yeah, uh, it feels great. It's come full circle. I started my career here in this kind of, in, in Melbourne, and um, you know I'm, and, uh, I'm here in a different sport uh, at, at the top end. So it's great to be here with UFC, biggest organization on the planet. Now you're in a phenomenal shape going into this fight. Is this the best shape that we've ever seen, Mark Hunt, in the UFC so far? Correct. Yes. What kind of weight are we looking at? How much did you lose over there in Thailand? I don't know what the weight was. I had a good nutritionist. Thanks very much for that. And um, <laughs> and uh, just looking, you know, ready to go. I'm not, no, no weight cut this time. How much Thanks. Does it mean to you to get the draw off your record? I mean, you won't get it off your record, but you'll avenge it in a sense. Well, look, the only thing that reminds me of that fight is just what happened and uh, the bad side of it. Every time someone mentions that that fight to me, it just it just brings up why it was mad. So. A lot of people are saying this is going to be a rematch of one of the best heavyweight fights in UFC history. You just gave a prediction of a first round knockout. What do you think is going to be a lot quicker this time around than the first time? Well, look, man, it's going to be a fight. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm looking to go knock him out, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Every fight's different, but we'll see what happens. Which is a more difficult fight for you physically, the, the, one, the first fight with Bigfoot or this most recent one with Stipe? The one with Stipe was hard. Yeah, I, I got beaten up. I got beaten up, uh, you know, I beat myself, I lost that fight, but uh, it was hard. That's why I had to do some changes, so yeah. What, what was the major issues leading up in, uh, to that fight? Was it just your training camp, you, you, the weight? It was me, you know, I had to lose like uh, 10 kilograms in the day before, the day of the weigh in, so that wasn't good. It was not good for anybody, so I, I'm not doing that again and it's not happening again. Are you confident cardio won't be an issue this time? Oh no, I'm ready to go five, ten rounds, whatever you need, I'm ready. Do you see this as a sort of chance to redeem yourself for the, the Mijic, um fight? Yeah, of course. The Mitchell fight uh, doesn't sit well with me. It still doesn't. That's why I'm here already. When you spoke to us, you said there were some issues with not eating carbs or something going into the Stipe fight. Is that all going to be sorted going into this one? There is no weight cut here. It's, it's sorted already, so... I'm just, you, apart from the physical, mental is a big part of the game. Is there anything differently you've done mentally to approach this fight than you have in the past? I've just um, put myself, in, I surrounded myself with good people. Um, not like the last camp was was bad. It was just my fault. I made a lot of mistakes in that last bit, and um, not making them again. So, you know, thanks to Stipe for that. Yeah, earlier you mentioned how UFC is um, the the biggest uh, org, uh, sporting um, combat sporting organization in the world. Did you feel it sort of, um, I guess, capitalised on the fact that I guess boxing is generally um, viewed as being in decline? Well, I think when anyone, everyone realizes like a mixed martial arts is the ultimate in fighting sport, then they understand the, the uneducation of people looking at it and oh, that's just that's not a good sport. Until they actually go through the process of the learning the ground game, it's then they understand. So you know, boxing is one-dimensional. It's just uh, you know your brain and your freaking hands. But uh, mixed martial arts has got so many different levels. Is it um, How does it feel being back here under these circumstances now? Did you ever think that you'd get here like this? No, I didn't. Like I said, uh, for myself, I, I, I didn't even want to be a fighter. But uh, it's come full circle now here in Melbourne. And great city of Melbourne, of course. And I started fighting in the Crown, in the K1 Oceana. And um, yeah, I'm back now with the UFC. So, you know, thanks yeah. to God for that. <laughs> well, speaking of your story, your book's come out. And it's an incredible journey of your life. Some of the stuff that you've written in there, I mean, it's incredible what you've achieved in your career. How does it feel for, that, that you know that fans know what you've been through and now they're on your side and they know the whole story behind everything? Well, look, for me to share the book, I, I said no to it like four or five times, but just to share my story so I can help others is the main thing, the reason why I did it. You know, I, it wasn't for the money, it wasn't for, I don't like to air my duty launch to anybody, but um, to help others in, in the struggle and the journey is, is, is something a positive. I've been given a platform by God for the UFC, so this is the reason why I said oh, yes to Vanessa for doing it. So, you know, Hatchet Australia, and Vanessa, thank you very much. After your career finishes, Mark, do you think you plan on making a sequel to that book? You know, only God knows. I have no idea, mate, honestly. No idea at all. Just uh, I'm just going with it, what I'm doing. So yeah. yeah. You have two fights well, left. Uh, well, you you no mentioned you have two fights there's left. No, sorry, sorry. You have two fights left in your contract. You are you looking to renegotiate? Or are you just kind of is it wait and see at this point like, for the I rest don't of know, your man? It, uh, every fight can be my last. This fight here, something now can be my last fight. Who knows? I don't know. How long realistically do you think you could? Go, I mean, you're 41 now. How long do you think realistically you could go on for? Do you feel? Mentally, I could fight forever. I feel I'm the best fighter on the planet. My mind says I get five years, but physically, you know, I, just, I won't be able to do it. But uh, I love fighting. It's just harder to. You got a lot of young, 
up and coming uh, heavyweights from Australia and New Zealand. They're, they're bloody damn good, man. <laughs> so it's hard to keep up with them. There's been opposition in this area uh, to MMA. Now it's coming back. And I saw yesterday there was an editorial that said they shouldn't allow kids in the in the stadium. Why do you think there's been strong opposition? And what do you think about that stance that they should ban kids? I think they try and associate street thuggery and street fighting with what we do as, as sport mixed martial arts. But uh, if anything wants to prove I'm one that's moved totally away from violence and street violence, started from that from the negative coming to a positive and I've used mixed martial arts and, and um, martial arts is a way to, to get, a, get away from it. Every martial artist knows that when you do a lot of martial arts and training, you move away from that aggressive side of being an angry person, angry, angry young kid. So if anything, for example, I'm a pure example. Do you find that it gives a platform to, for self-discipline? It does. Well? Yeah. I'm a pure example of that, so yeah, yeah. there you go. What, what about the, the opinion that they should ban kids from coming to the fights on something? Like that? I, I don't think so. My son would be here, but my wife is sick of looking after the kids. That's why she, he's not coming. Well, a fellow legend, K1 legend Miko Krokop, just retired a few days ago. Amazing career. It was a fight that people wanted to see you guys have in the UFC. It's not going to happen. What were your thoughts when you heard that he's retired and he's gone from the UFC? That's uh, his prerogative, and uh, you know it's good on him. He's had a great career. Um, you know, it is what it is. When it's time, it's time. I, I don't want to be one of those fighters just say it's time and then come back and say, you know, I should have, would have, could have. When I'm out, I'm out. So, you know, good on. You're a great striker. Do you think Bigfoot will try to take this fight to the ground against you? Uh, honestly, I don't really care where it goes. I'm ready. I'm ready. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Appreciate it. Cheers, man. Thank you.